Hey, thanks for stopping by my channel. In this video, we're gonna check out one of the easiest bugs that I think you can find in Bug Bounty. And it is also, I believe, number one in OWASP top 10, and that is the iDoor. And I was on TryHackMe, and I was just looking through some new labs that I had never done before. It came across this iDoor lab. I have never done it. I have never read any of the labs. So let's go ahead and jump into it, and I'll show you just how easy iDoors really can be. So here we are. What is an iDoor? iDoor is an indirect object reference, which really doesn't tell us anything. Basically, I like to think of iDoors as like the matrix where you have all of these different possible doors that you can go through and you just start picking different doors to see what's behind them. And one of the ways we can see what an iDoors, let's see if it gives us an example. It doesn't. So I'm guessing we're supposed to type in I indirect. Oh, look right here. We can just copy this. Insecure. Oh, I think I said indirect. Insecure direct object reference right here. We can paste that in, submit it, and it tells us we're right. I want to see right here, this is a great example right here. So an ID is gonna be a good place to look for a IDOR. And instead of having like 1000, we could just change this to like 99 or 9,999. And you get to change those and see if you can find something else there. So we have this uh, view site and what are we supposed to do? Imagine we have just signed up for an online service and you want to change your profile information. We click on it, we see this right here, and I'm guessing we need to change it to 1000. So here we are, we're clicking through here, we have this site, we have this 1234, I bet you that we're supposed to change this right here to 1000, and we have the iDoor. So I hope you saw how that worked let's see if that worked so it was at one two three four right here and sometimes the idor won't be passed through a parameter sometimes you'll see it like this with these slashes or you i wonder if we could send it as though it is a no we're not gonna be able to send it as though it's a parameter because we have this invoice over here so let's go ahead and check out the next one so we have az az09 equals and it's telling it's talking about encoding so you have this base64 um, you're going to see base64 encoding so sometimes if you see base64 inside of a url or something like that you can decode it and see what number it is put in a new number base64 encode it and then paste it in the url i am guessing that is what we're doing so you have this base64 and it's going to tell you what it is. It is, that is exactly what it's telling us. We have this ID, we re-encode it, and then we can pass through the iDoor. What is a common type of encoding on websites? I'm going to guess that we're supposed to type in base64. And that is right. So let's check this one out. We have hashed IDs. And we have the number 123. And this right here is going to be MD5 sum and we it tells us we can put it into crack station this is actually something if you watch a lot of ipsex videos he uses crack station quite a lot and i'm guessing we're supposed to take this and put it inside crack station and it's going to tell us that it is one two three and it does md5 one two three so we have this here what is a common algorithm used for hashing ids so this is the base 64 encoding and it's looking for md5 for the hashing so we can just say md5 submit and we're going to have down here i think right here we're going to actually go to a website and do a, and actually exploit an idor which will be a lot more practical we'll just keep going through these for now if an idor cannot be detected using the above methods and excellent ways to use two accounts to swap between them in a bug bounty program you are gonna have to have two different accounts if you're testing for an idor and what you would do is you would open up burp right here and you would send through each each of your accounts and you would capture the web request in your proxy and then you would send it back and forth and you would try to change your id to the other account that you own's id you cannot test for idor unless you own two accounts so in a bug bounty program in the real world gonna have to have two accounts for that anyway so it tells us we have to have two accounts but if we find an idor in say like a hack the box or try hack me um, you always want to go to account number one you're going to try to take over the admin account so it tells us what is the minimum number of accounts you need is two the two where are i doors located and it tells us that there's no answer needed we just need to read it um, in this case right here we're going to see right here in this parameter sometimes you'll see it pass through like this like we saw earlier but it tells us we don't need an answer 
Um, so yeah, we'll go ahead and hit we know the answer to that and we'll go on to the practical IDOR. Now it might take a second for this machine to launch. See, it is launching. So once this launches, I'll unpause the video and we'll check out what this wants us to do. I'm actually gonna read it so you don't have to watch me read it and I'll bring you back. Okay, so this looks like it has went ahead and ran for us. We'll paste this in here and it tells us that it wants us to create an account I believe we need to create an account, we need to log in, and then we'll try and do this the way they have it imaged right here through inspecting the elements, um, and then we'll do it through Burp if it allows us to. So where is this right here? Um, I believe we need to log in right here. So we need to sign up, we need to create an account. So we'll just give that as our name. Here's our email. We'll just make our email the password as well and we can sign up. And now we are logged in here. And let's see, um, it told us to, it gave the image of inspect network. We need to refresh our page and see what we get back. Let's look through right here, these get requests. We have this ID 15 and it tells us over here that we can go to this this page right here so we can copy that but before we do I want to see what happens if we send this through burp we get the customer names and we hit this right here this is what we would see and we would just go ahead and send this to repeater I would rather do things through burp than through this um, but this is the example that they gave so we're gonna go ahead and do this through burp because I want to so if we send this, here is our response. It gives us our email and our username. What are we looking for? We're looking for the user ID of one. So the IDOR would be right here and we would just send with the user of one and we're going to grab Adam84 as the username and then just paste that in. That did not work. So Adam84 submit and we need the email address for user number three so what we would do is say this i door now we want is number three and i accidentally hit enter so we'll send this and we'll grab this email right here so this is how i doors work they are pretty simple to do and i doors are the most common bug i believe they're number one on os top 10 as soon as i finish this video i'm actually going to go look it up because i might be wrong on that but i'm pretty sure they're number one and i think hacker one put out at the beginning of the year that i doors were the number one most common vulnerability found on hacker one bug bounty programs so this is a very easy bug that you can start looking for right away and another great thing about the i door is it is really common i think it's the easiest to find and it's the most common vulnerability out there on bug bounty programs so with that, take this knowledge and have fun hunting for these in the wild. Thanks for watching.